Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your monthly, ooh, weekly reading for November 1st to the 10th. This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. And we're going to jump right into it before I continue to confuse where we are. Um, it's actually technically November 4th to the 10th, right, for the week. But because you see most of the major aspects are happening over that weekend before we're just gonna throw that in i wouldn't leave you hanging gemini and this is the busiest week of november there are nine transits and aspects that are happening this week so uh, buckle up this is gonna be big now we kick it off with a new moon in scorpio on november 1st big huge wonderful we've got the sun here we got mercury here remember we're still in scorpio season but this new moon man there is intensity there is depth there is passion this new moon is amazing and it's in your sixth house and so oh i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of y'all get new projects assignments maybe something that happens with colleagues hiring colleagues if you own a business something here that's really special you know six houses lifestyle it's health it's wellness it's fitness it's even pets again wouldn't be surprised if you get a pet around this time really great new moon six houses everyday activities it's your routine so you could be shifting into this new daily routine structure in your life and remember you harness this energy set intentions this new moon is for you it's a portal for you okay new beginnings right here for you right here for you now with all this scorpio energy don't be afraid to get in touch with your truths that's what scorpio energy really does as well you've got mars exile uranus still the tail end of that that was happening last week that's really special saturn is trining this new moon remember trines are incredibly auspicious saturn hey stability okay there's this level of maturity determination things that saturn represents but with the fact that saturn is in pisces in your 10th house of career you got this new moon in your sixth house of work definitely something that could be here really great with work and career for you okay so uh keep that in mind this is just going to be really 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 nice and remember that level of that Scorpio energy, it could even be like secrets coming out to the surface here. Uh, it could be like being honest with yourself about things, seeing the light, seeing the truth, your higher truth, okay? But it nonetheless, there could be some like secrets, okay? It kind of reminds me, I've been telling the other signs, I've been watching that show, The Perfect Couple on, on Netflix, the one with Nicole Kidman, the one with like every scene, the, someone has a look of like, oh, I have a secret, or I know your secret. I, that could happen. It could happen, okay? There is things that could be, uh, you know, truths, you know, being revealed. And not in a bad way, too. That would, you know, that's going to happen when we get to Mars opposite Pluto, but this could be just you unrooting things in you, like fi like taking weight off your shoulders by saying, oh, thank goodness I said that, or, you know, finally, you know, was honest with myself about this circumstance, I'll let that go, okay? Scorpio really does have great passion here. You may feel very passionate. Now, with that said, what did I mention earlier, Mars opposite Pluto, this new moon, hey, Mars and Pluto are the rulers of Scorpio. So yeah, Scorpio is a Scorpion. Stingers can be a little bit out. So just be mindful about that. Okay. Now, uh, November 2nd, now we are on Saturday. Mercury is going to trine Mars. Mercury is going to sex out Pluto as well. So how wonderful is this? Your ruling planet Mercury. Your ruling planet Mercury. So this is really nice. I think there's going to be something, uh, first, Mercury trine Mars. This is rare, by the way. So I, it happens like once a year. Mercury trining Mars, have, and trines, again, very auspicious, really nice, really nice. So take advantage of this. This is you having confidence. Confidence, I've got this energy, especially with communication, right? Anything with discovering your truth, especially with Mercury in Scorpio. Remember, there is that molder energy right um the truth of a situation as well have an important conversation around this time you may actually just have one a conversation that has weight to it but remember there is this really great flow here so it could be something that brings a lot of success a lot of power then you've got mercury sex selling pluto pluto all about power in your eighth house there's something very harmonious here where uh 
you're getting movement, conversations, even you processing, thinking things in terms of love, relationships, power, sex, uh, f- money, finances, big, big thing. Don't forget Pluto and Capricorn, your eighth house. Yes, really, really big. But with Mercury sex out of Pluto, which is a very harmonious aspect, there's also this sense of being empowered, not afraid to get to the bottom of things. Okay, remember that element of like secrets, almost in a fun way, almost in this like... Nancy, Drew, Hardy Boys, kind of way, but speaking your truth, finding your truth, all of that here, breaking down walls. Remember Pluto and Capricorn? There could be something, and that it's very psychological, this Pluto energy. So, again, something within you where you're building your power, especially with communications. Now, that's all happening at 29 degrees. As we know, that's an anoretic degree, critical degree. It's strong. It's strong. And then you see right after that, because there's 30 degrees, uh, right? So uh, moves into, Mercury moves into Sagittarius. I talk about this a lot in your monthly forecast. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but there you go. There you go. Two months of Mercury and Sagittarius in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So this is all big picture energy. What do you want in terms of partnerships? Okay. Uh, relationships. It can be work. It can be career. It can be love, romance, your it can be uh, your uh, therapist, your tennis coach, one-on-one relationships is what commitments, uh, all about gains, wisdom, philosophy, uh, would not be surprised if there's a lot of movement here, talking, manif- talking something into existence, manifestation, right? Because we're all leading up to that new moon in Sagittarius for you. Okay, that's going to happen at the end of the month. Now, November 3rd, this is Sunday. This is when we do get to Mars opposite Pluto, both at 29 degrees. And uh, as you know, this is a very strong aspect. Uh, out of the millions, of, well, not millions, but all the, all the all the aspects in astrology, there are some that are really challenging and mars opposite pluto is one of them okay so just remember you can channel this energy for power transformation to feel really driven okay this is the two rulers of scorpio here so you're going to feel that intensity and change remember pluto transformation right i said okay so feeling unstoppable feeling unbreakable feeling like uh like you've got the energy of a dragon and the kraken okay uh cleopatra energy mommy shark whatever you want okay just use this energy to your advantage in a way where you're channeling it for growth for creativity for uh just using it constructively remember you're on a karmic journey and so this is all about inspired action because this type of aspect can have a butterfly effect okay that you set in motion And so remember, you want to break down those walls to make it easier to go down your path to enlightenment. Again, you're on a karmic journey here. Okay, so uh, with great power, which is what this aspect is, does come great responsibility. Channel this energy to be the best version of yourself. You do not need to kick over any apple carts. All right. Now, Venus will be opposite Jupiter. Wow. Wow. So. Uh, this is going to be very interesting for you, Gemini, Venus opposite Jupiter. Yes. Don't forget Venus is in Jupiter all week, right? So, um, how do I say this? <laughs> in a nice way, Jupiter's in your sign, Gemini. That's why I was like, you're really going to feel this. But remember, Jupiter's retrograde, all about the internal wisdom going within. This is very fun. It's optimistic. That's what Jupiter is, okay? But it is opposite Venus. When it's opposite Venus, there's no off button. This is really indulging. This is really indulging, uh, indulgent pleasures, vices as well but splurging as well, splurging on things. Again, no off button, no no limit. It's like a credit card. They ain't got no limit on it. So just keep that in mind. That's what Venus opposite Jupiter is. You could feel like really, really wanting to indulge around this time. Just be mindful of that. That's all it's saying, okay? Do you really need uh, those Jimmy Choo's? Do you really need that... Uh, third cookie you know things like that like you can have it you can have it but don't let it lead to like a fourth fifth sixth twentieth all right now there may be something here that actually has to do with partnerships relationships too for y'all okay keep that in mind with venus being in sagittarius on the same day you got mars moving into leo this is uh again enormous this is huge you're going to be 
kind of like in your element, but you're going to feel a lot more fire behind it. Okay. Because Mars and Leo's in your house, in your domain, right? Third house, communication, logic, thinking, processing, uh, 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 learning new things, being curious about things, but definitely going to be in your element here, but fiery with Mars and Leo. Now, remember Mars is here for two months. The thing that I did not say in your monthly forecast is that remember because of the retrograde that's happening. Yeah. And cancer and then Leo again, Mars and Leo again in spring 2025. So there's going to be something that happens in 2025, spring 2025 that you're coming back to around this time when Mars is in Leo. Okay. So just take advantage of Mars and Leo, that higher vibration of it for this month before Mars goes retrograde uh, next month. All right. Use this to your advantage. All right. Remember, uh, Mars and Leo is also like pride. OK, feeling proud of what you've accomplished, goals that you are set for yourself. Uh, use it for that high frequency. Mars and Leo can be like prideful as well. So just keep that in mind. Right. Leo, the king. Anyway, uh, now we're on November 4th. And, uh, I know y'all are going to be fine. Y'all are Gemini's. Y'all smart. OK, I'm Gemini rising. Y'all, we got November 4th, the sun trining Saturn. This is also pretty rare. It only happens like twice a year. Use it. Use it. This. Remember, this is a sun trining Saturn. Remember, I just said the moon is also trining Saturn. So you've got this in your 10th house of career, fame, public recognition, honors, achievements. There is something here really special for you. Okay. Very goal oriented. Things are happening for you. Remember Saturn can't, you know, he's a taskmaster. He's all about discipline and he may be a malefic planet, but he does get a bad rep people, but you've got to see him as like a coach kind of like, you know, I don't know the coach at uh, Friday night lights where he's trying to inspire you. He's trying to get you to, you know, work hard to feel really good when you get rewarded. Remember, Saturn rewards you. So something could really, you can feel this really big push inside, something really kicking into higher gear. Uh, remember, Saturn is long-term energy. This is happening just days after that new moon in Scorpio. So again, for a lot of Geminis, there's going to be a lot of movement, something here for career in it for the long haul. Now, with the sun trining Saturn as well, there really could be some like male authority figures, VIPs, bosses, maybe even fathers, father figures that do lend like really great advice. Get you know you uh, getting great guidance for them. It could be you giving great guidance around this time. But either way, you've got a lot of power. Okay, to forge something that's really great, long lasting. Now, lastly, November 9th, you've got Venus square Neptune. This is gonna happen on Saturday, the second Saturday. Venus is. The little sister of Neptune. We love Venus and Neptune together, but this is a square. Okay. We've already had this a couple times a year. Um, this is just where you, this is having a foot on the ground. Okay. Because this can bring up like daydream. This is like daydream energy, right? I desire this. I want this. This makes me feel good. This daydream, but have a foot on the ground. It is a square. Okay. Um, because... Neptune sort of dissolves Venus, uh, you know, can be a little bit weakened in a square like this. So just have a foot on the ground. That's all I'm going to say. All right. You could get caught up in daydreams that are, you know, a little over the, you know, like I'm going to, you know, be the owner of a private island on Mars. I'm going to make that happen. Just have a foot on the ground. Okay. The other thing is this can bring out like this type of aspect can, can bring out like some insecurities with you know venus weekend here and it is you know i've been saying it's like that movie bridesmaids did you see that that scene when chris and wig uh annie saw helen right How, the rose burned character for the first time and you could see the look on her face it was like oh wow you're more beautiful than me like uh, nobody will love me like they love you. Like, gosh, I wish I was you. Gosh, I'm not good enough. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what Venus squared Neptune can do. So remember, have a foot on the ground, inspired actions, Neptune retrograde, 29 degrees, Pisces. Like, uh, that's, remember I said in your past forecast, illusion, delusion, confusion, escapism as well. So just, again, if you do have like a lot of wishful thinking and dreams that you want, just have that inspired action with it. Okay. So, uh, but with a foot of ground, let's see what's going on for you, Gemini. Let's see what's going on. Y'all, this is going to be a big week. 
Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. If you want to read for any of their placements in your chart. Ooh, gosh. Okay, well, that fell out, Three of Swords. We're going to keep that in mind. That did show up in your monthly forecast too, didn't it? Okay, so we're let's keep that in mind. See why that's coming up, the Three of Swords. All right, but anyway, let's see what's going up for you, Gemini, for November 1st to the 10th. And I was going to say, if you if there are any other placements in your chart that you want to read for, you are absolutely right. Uh, welcome to, um, if you know your chart. Now, Gemini, I do a traditional cult across spread. It offers the best overview. If we need to pull clarifiers, well, you know that we will. Secondly, um, y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for being here. I am truly excited for all this work energy, career stuff. Y'all had Saturn there for a while, so Saturn has been pushing you to achieve a lot more. Anyway, let's see what's going on. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it does. So you're clearly really good here. You're obviously really good. So when that Three of Swords pops up, it is just, you know, something that you may be healing from this week, emotionally healing from something that's already happened or something that you're going through, but then you feel that empowerment, like, I'm not gonna let this hold me back because look at what's happening, okay? This is absolutely amazing, okay? Three of Swords, it could be something with a partnership relationship as well, okay? Remember with Mercury and Sagittarius, you may be having a lot of talks with partnerships, relationships. Something could be ending there as well, uh, but it does seem like maybe it's uh, two things. One, you're doing it, and then secondly, it could be something that happens to you where, you know, it's a breakup or whatnot, and for you, for a hot second, you're like, bummer right with that five of cups energy but then you're like you know what screw it i got so much i got a lot of other great things to look forward to and so i'm healing from that i've learned a lot from that moving forward okay now you do have the five of cups so yeah this came up in your recent past i'm there you go five of cups um i feel like do you get there you go you did okay so two cups behind him right so all this hope in this card, all this energy of like, look, keep moving forward because you got a lot to look forward to. You won't even be able to see that if you are dwelling on the past at these cups that are already spilled that you can't do anything about, right? So all about moving forward. Think about your future, right? You see the bridge, cross the bridge, go home. Okay, go home, turn on, uh, you know, Bridesmaids or, you know, Star Trek, whatever you want to watch. Just, or, you know, listen to music, right? That's the thing about Venus Square and Neptune. How do you use that? How do you use that to vibrate at this high frequency? Music, the arts, performing arts, feeling inspired by that, okay? Uh, so this is uh, definitely going to be something where uh, it does feel like, again, it feels like a hot second. <laughs> look at what's happening here. You got the four of wands in the heart of your spread. You got a lot to look forward to. And this is a week where things may happen for you that with this new moon, something amazing comes through where it's like you even just forget about this, right? Do that healing though. Like you want to always do that emotional healing if you feel it's necessary, but it could be that this new moon is so bright and it brings something new. I mean, like you have the four of wands here. This is feeling free. This is feeling unbound. You see they're outside of the castle, right? There is this limitless feeling to this. It's a for a one, so it's celebration, it's joy, and partnerships, relationships. I said that's going to be a bit. Look at the couple here. Come on, come on. And there's this sense of like your joy brings other people joy with the four of ones. This is also a card of milestones. So there's something here where it could be a new job. It could be a promotion. You starting your own business. You having a baby. You getting married, getting proposed to things like like things like that something you're driven about something that's just bringing you so much joy it's in the heart of your spread and you've got the queen of swords in your challenge area just be mindful there may be someone that does say something to you that is very uh mean girls there could be someone that's in your way very mean girls there could be someone who is you know has a sharp tongue okay with that queen of swords in your challenge area and also i don't want you to be that person to um i don't think it's going to be you i doubt it's going to be you but 
it really does feel like there may be someone in your life okay it could be someone that you have had this uh the potential of like you breaking up with someone or ending you know like maybe quitting your job or whatever it is right this three of swords and that five of cups energy it could be that other person that is like he says something during that mars pluto opposition remember a lot of power trip and power struggling and whatnot uh that is like they're bitter about something yeah okay so just keep that in mind always you know be the best version of yourself handle things with grace you've got this you're going to be fine now the other thing about mars opposite pluto which i didn't mention i said this in your monthly forecast there could be something that has to do with money all right because it does hit the two money houses in the zodiac wheel for you gemini right so there could be an argument about money not seeing eye to eye about money finances shared resources joint bank accounts loans things like that, anything that, okay? So just bear that in mind. And if not anything for money, something about your self-worth and self-value where something could test it. And so remember, rise above. You're going to be fine. You got the Knight of Cups. So it does seem like uh, with the hair front here and the root of your spread, it seems like there is something that you're thinking about that's happening in your life that is moving in your direction that you want. I mean, Knight of Cups mr romance but also like remember i talked about that partnership energy that it may be on your mind well hey move toward it speak it into existence put energy behind it manifest it but it seems like that may be something on your mind where you realize there is a certain type of partnership that is going to bring you the sense of joy and emotional fulfillment okay you're going to be fine. You're going to be good. You're going to be great. I love that energy here. And again, there could be something here with career, with the wands, uh, something, if not career, your passion, something, um, ambitions of yours. Um, but with that Knight of Cups, it's very interesting. Knight of Cups is attributed to Pi he's Pisces. Remember, I said you got Saturn and Neptune and Pisces in your 10th house of career, fame, your reputation, public recognition, all of that. Um, but there is something where you are moving toward that's going to fulfill you emotionally you got the hair font here which is really great this is you're definitely setting up some structures in your life this week okay some structures and maybe even getting that recognition that you deserve this week as well you know even if just looking down your cross but with that 401s the hair font here just wisdom there's something that is going to feel moving for you in terms of like i feel wiser i want to feel wiser spreading that wisdom within the, my world people are seeing me like that kind of energy really really strong um discipline is a big thing remember i said saturn all about discipline as well so this is really great and then you got the ten of pentacles in your future i mean hello that's pretty amazing if you ask me so ten of pentacles in your future really great i mean it's raining pentacles. It's it, uh, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Oh my gosh, you actually you did get that in your monthly forecast, didn't you? Um, yeah. So, wow. I mean, this is all about your legacy. This is all about your legacy. Um, you're moving into it. I mean, the ten of pentacles in your future again, money, wealth. Those are big themes for you that you could be feeling. Um, this week uh moving toward a goal moving toward something that is what you consider prosperity for you success for you like your kingdom come but also coming into your physicality so like your physical realm like recognizing what you have in your world uh things that make you feel grateful you see there's so much abundance here now this is a virgo card by the way so um I remember Virgo rules your fourth house. And so y'all have been going through those moments of like home matters, maybe real estate, maybe family, maybe children, your significant other, maybe parents, something there. But you see the three generations of family here. That's that's absolutely big. And then you've got Pluto and Capricorn. Remember, Pluto is going to have some like aspects and, you know, even that wonderful aspect with Mercury, your ruling planet. Uh, this card does have to do with inheritance as well. And Pluto and Capricorn, remember your eighth house, inheritance, investments as well. Uh, you're good. You're you're great. There's something you're you're good. <laughs> Let's get to your stuff. Uh, Gemini. Oh, my goodness. Y'all, I, I, 
big, big. When I saw that three of swords flip over, I was like, oh gosh, okay, well, this is going to be a long reading now. Um, if you like this reading, it would be great. If you like, subscribe, leave comments, let me know what is going on. Talk to me. What, we, what, what, what's, what, are we, what are we up to? Uh, and you know, I love y'all. And the other thing I was going to say, the three of swords, by the way, is a Libra card. So again, there's something with partnerships, activities that may be there, but also there is this, uh, you know, energy that is strong in terms of two things that's coming through for me. One, yes, career. So maybe you're leaving a job. Maybe something's happening. Maybe a colleague's leave something. Just be mindful of that. Now, the second thing that, uh, it's coming through for me is like, there could be something that, the end of something that was fun for you in a sense. Okay. But now it's like, okay, well, it's just the end of one chapter moving into this new chapter in my life. It could be as, you know, maybe even with these two cards or, you know, even wherever you even place this in, in this spread, it could be that maybe your best friend, uh, you know, is your roommate or next door neighbor and they met, you know, uh, they got married and moved off to Tallahassee or I don't know, uh, Kansas, wherever. And so you don't get to see them every day. And that's that like, oh, that like, oh, gosh, that emotional impact. OK, so anyway, uh, yeah. And you're good. You see you're good anyway. So, Wow. What a week. What a week. You have the four of swords. So take that time to just, you know, have that retreat. Really just have that stillness of mind, mind, body, spirit, all of it. Okay. This is all about just meditation. You've got all this support around, around you. You've got all this light. Just take that time to still the mind because remember, three of swords and then four of swords, right? So you got the four of swords, but I love where it shows up in your spread, okay? Because a lot of y'all are doing that anyway. It's almost like you're recognizing, like I said, like, okay, well, this happened, moving forward. Like, I I so much look forward to, all right? Now, you got the page of wands and your external factors. I mean, uh, there's a there's definitely someone uh joining your journey this week okay really nice secondly you could be getting a message about something pages are the messengers something about work something about career something about your passions or your ambitions something about travel too by the way are y'all planning a trip some of y'all planning a trip maybe um but this is really great I mean, pages are the newbies. It's coming right after that Ten of Pentacles. There's something happening here that's new during the new moon in Scorpio. Now, speaking of that, you did get the moon. Now, where it comes up in your spread, it is saying, yeah, I don't want to create fears anymore. I don't want anything to block my path anymore. Okay. Now, the other thing is like, you could have a fear of creating this fear that is in your path. But remember, fear is fiction. Okay, fear does not even exist. So what did I say early creating the fears, it's something that you would create in your head. So but the bigger picture here is that yeah, there is likely something here, uh, shifting changing that may have to do with being in touch with intuition, being in touch with your higher truth, right? All of that, breaking down those walls that I mentioned earlier up here, very psychological, um, letting things go, letting things go. Okay, you even see the towers here. I mean, you're that little crayfish. You got to go through those towers, but don't be afraid of that. You got to break them down. If you want to break them down, break them down. Okay, uh, could be something with career too, right? Um, you just have a lot of career stuff. You have these wands, you have the pentacles, you have uh, the knight of cups and the moon. These two cards are Pisces cards. And so remember, Pisces rules your 10th house of career, fame, public recognition, whatever you're exerting your energy into that you want to be known for if you're not here for career. And then, but speaking of career, you also got the king of wands, who is the entrepreneur. This is uh, big. This is really big passion. This is epitome of fire. This is very transformative energy. This is someone who can't sit still. This is someone who's, there's that excitement. And he is Leo, by the way. Remember, Mars is moving into Leo, too. So that's a big sign. That's that's really big because Mars and Leo is just like, boom, boom, boom. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, you're good. King of Wands, yeah, a passions, all about your passions. And uh, just sitting in that throne, you've, 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 
working with your way up in a way where you're just going to be really happy. Things are going to happen for you. Um, and again, a lot of y'all can be in a sense like this big authority for other people to, it just changes that are happening in your life. It's really, really nice. You have a really great spread. Okay. Um, Wow. Wow. All right, Gemini. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. I mean, y'all got a lot to look forward to, but remember that inspired action, take that action. I feel like a lot of y'all, I feel like I don't even have to say that. A lot of y'all will. A lot of things are just going to happen for you in this great way. This new moon is really great for you. Um, I love this. I absolutely love this. All right. So remember this came up in your recent past. It's just we're moving on. It seems like you're ready to, and you're good. Gemini, thanks so much. Next week, yes, we have, um, oh, we have a lot happening, right? We have that full moon. We have that full moon, okay? In Taurus, we have uh, Venus moving into Capricorn. We have a lot. We'll talk about it next week. If you, did I say if you like this reading? Yeah, all that stuff that helps the algorithm, liking, subscribing. But I do want to hear from y'all. I want to know what's going on with Team Gemini. Anyway, y'all are amazing. I'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.